Hi all my RC friends and welcome back again to another upgrade video here on RC Fun Games guys. I am Ryan and today we're going to be fitting the Endura Flex Blades to the Traxxas TRX4M Defender. This one is still running the original chassis so before I change the chassis out to the LCG chassis I just wanted to test the Flex Blades on it especially that we've already got the new shocks on there. So guys let's get the body off, let's let these little guys get to work so we can actually get this job done. Okay guys, now that we've let them do some work, we might as well help them. Let's just get these screws out from the shocks. Okay guys, let's get these flex blades open. Okay guys, as you can see, I think those are the uppers and these are the lowers okay and they all come individually marked on top if you look in there you can actually see FUR, FUL, RUL so rear upper left rear, front upper right okay it's pretty simple and these are also all marked and these will be the lower ones okay so anyway let's start by getting them open they also give you all the hardware but I don't think I'll be using this because we've got our stainless steel ones I'll rather use those guys so anyway let's get these open it provides everything that we need to be able to install them so let's get stuck in so we are looking for the right rear left front lower left rear left okay so it should be this one so we'll put all that to the one side. And we're gonna need the R right, upper, left. Okay guys, so that's where I'm gonna start. And as you guys can see, right, upper, left, right, lower, left. Okay guys, so let's get stuck in. Okay, the bushing is gonna go in the real lower left side. Okay, not in the upper side. You just put it in there like that from the back guys and then basically put your screw back goes through to the link so let's put that back first okay once you've got a few turns in get your link up Now that should move freely, which it does. Okay guys, so that's number one done. Now, the upper one. Okay. Now we're gonna take our other shorter screw, same one we took out, put that in the top. definitely a lot easier to fit to the original chassis than to the LCG chassis because that was difficult guys okay now that we've got that one there clearly the shock is gonna go behind on that side so let's see if we can still fit it or do we have to fit it before we put it on there so this is gonna go there Okay guys, so that one's on, that was no problem. Now guys, you've got two holes on the back. If you want more flex, of course, go for the upper hole. I'm gonna go for the lower hole because I don't want it to stretch out as much as all that, okay? But there's always more if you really wanted to give it more. Okay guys? So I'm just gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna lift that and I'm gonna try go for the second hole. Ok 
Okay, and that's how difficult it is to fit the flex blade, guys. As you guys can see, it's already got much more droop. I think it might actually work quite okay on this chassis compared to the LCG chassis, guys. So let's just continue going around. Let's get our wheel back on on this side. I think we'll let the guys do enough work, don't you guys? I think it's time we put the wheels back on or else we're gonna wait forever for those guys to do the job. Okay guys, so let's move on to the front one on this side. Might as well stick it underneath there. Oh, still got some pine needles from the last outing. Okay. Now guys, these are always a bit trickier because of the steering knuckles, but let's just get that off over there. Now I do find the front a bit more tricky than the back, but nothing difficult to do guys. Now just the top one. Okay, so we've got our shock off. Now, guys, we have to find front, upper, right. That's for that side. Front, if you guys look carefully, front, upper, left, okay? So it's gonna be sitting by the looks of it that way. This time, the one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna stick the screw in before. Okay. As you guys can see, a bit of thread comes out, but it's rather have something out than not have anything. Okay, now we grab our screw again. Same screw I took out from the shock. There we are, I'm quite happy with that, guys. Now, we got our bottom one to do. So, we're looking for, as you guys can see, front, lower, left, okay? Okay, guys, you grab your bushing. You have it sitting like this, okay guys? And then you put it in from the back. Very simple. And now we have to stick it down there. So we grab the original screw. We're gonna stick it through our hole just to make it easier. One tip I'm gonna give you guys, don't forget to push it right down to the base before you even start trying to screw it in or also get stuck on the C-hub guys. Okay, just a couple of turns just to get it to grab, get your link. Okay, and now I just screw all the way home. Okay, as you guys can see, that wasn't difficult at all. Now, we've got it there, all we've got to do is get our tower in. Now, one thing I will tell you guys, is you will notice, this is why I say it's a bad design, it wasn't very well made, the front ones. When you're turning flat out, this catches the knuckle, okay? It catches the knuckle, or shall I say it catches the steering arm. Just, just, but it catches it. So that means when this is on, and you turn flat out, it catches the shock, guys. If you pay attention there, it catches the shock. So if you had to use the front hole, it's gonna limit how much you can turn. So I'm gonna use the rear hole once again, on the bottom flex blade okay guys hope that helps you guys as well because i noticed that and i don't like losing steering angles because you know it really hits your performance outside so now let's lift this little guy up here i don't know if you guys can see but he's screwing in over there Okay, it's nice and tight. Okay guys, now as you guys can see, when it comes down and you're turning, it still hits, look there. It still hits the actual nut and bolt on the actual shock and the bottom of the shock. So I don't know where their design was thought of because at the end of the day, this should have been a lot shorter so that it wouldn't mess around with the steering, okay guys? Or they should have made it that the upper one moved. But yeah, to me, I got a funny feeling I won't be running the front. Let's just see. And once again, you see, as soon as you put the front ones on, guys, you end up with a world of problem because now you've got this, the servo, 
which I don't understand why they went and made the cable come out of the front, but it catches all over the bumper mount, which is actually your body mount. So, and the wiring for your lights, everything is in the way. But you can see it's catching nicely. It won't even let it run freely. Okay, so now we're gonna have to carve away on this to be able to clear the servo. And I don't even want that much droop in the front, guys, because all it does is get in the way. But, you know, just for this video, just to show you guys how to fit it, I'm doing it, but I don't think I'll be keeping the front flex blades as it interferes with the steering. And it just makes that you've got a lot of things to trim and cut. And you know what, guys? It really hit the performance on the Bronco. So it's it also takes away the realistic look. So I'm not going to go anymore with it. I'm just going to put them on for you guys. We're going to check the flex and everything, but I'll probably be removing these very quickly. Okay, guys? Hey guys, we're just going to throw this wheel on. I will do the other side off camera because I've already shown you guys how to do it. No point showing you how to do the other side as well. Don't you agree with me? This is a nice little servo they made. One downfall is not waterproof. Second of all, why did they make the cable come out of the front? It gives it a really bad angle on the cable because it has to run backwards. And it just gets in the way of everything. So, Injura, please take in consideration or come out the top or come out the back side because then at the end of the day, we wouldn't have this problem. We wouldn't have to trim anything and everything would work a lot better. Okay, another thing is, as well, your steering arm that catches your own flex blades. Take all these things into consideration. It's not funny that basically when you turn, boom, it hits. That's not good, guys. You can see right over there, it's catching, hitting solid. Can't go nowhere. So you're going to end up burning out your servo if you haven't got your endpoint set right. Because basically, their own design clashes. So I'm just pointing this out, guys, that you know, the flex is all very much fun. But you've got to do lots of mods to it and you don't gain any performance, all you do is actually take away the performance of your vehicle. So I'm just trying to make that apparent to people that actually are trying to get performance out of their vehicles. The flex blades are not the way to go, especially not in the front, okay? So let's just carry on. Let me get on with it so you guys can see what it looks like when I'm finished. And then I'm probably still gonna have to take this off and carve this away. Or I take this, like I did on the last one, and I super glue it up here so that we can then basically clear the mount that's the only other way you can do it and i don't like really putting that much pressure on the wire guys anyway let me stop talking let's get on with this okay guys we've got this side assembled as well now what i did do was i glued that and if you guys can see i basically glued the little rubber sock to the servo so it could lift it up so that i can clear the body mount but even so if you pay attention it'll just catch there it'll catch on the chassis you can even see it through there, it just catches. So it's not good having the flex blades on the front. It's just not adequate for the performance of the vehicle. It's just not meant to have that kind of flex. Okay, guys, you can run it and you can get photos and stuff, but I don't think it's a very smart idea. You've also got the risk of snapping your, you've also got the risk of snapping your drive shaft, guys, because the angle is so severe. If you pay attention, look at that angle and if you guys can see it, the back one, that's bad enough, but the front one is so severe that technically if it's out like that and you put it under pressure, you could snap your drive line, you could snap the gears inside your gearbox, you just don't know. It's a risk you're running by running these flex plates. And I don't see why would you want to do that. Doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, it sits nice and low with it on, guys. Now we can see how it just droops, yeah? And we can also check some performance, let's just see. Let's throw our body on. Okay, now let's get some stacks of tires yeah, guys. See how far can we go. Okay. Okay, guys. Now that we are here. See, another thing I noticed, guys, is with the flex blades, for some reason, the car, you saw, we had the shocks on before, it didn't have any of this problem. It would come back to level. Now with the shock blades on, the flex blades on, it's just... That's the first thing I'm going to point out is that it doesn't look realistic because no vehicle sits like that. And I can tighten up the springs and everything, but you know what, guys? It's just that angle. It's not nice. Anyway, that's one more thing. But let's just check what's important. Let's see if we actually gained on some flex or how bad is it. Okay, so we could get three tires flex, right, guys? 
actually it was these tires here and we could get all three of these with the flex blade without the flex blades just with the shocks so there we are we've got them again that's not a problem we've got that now let's see can we get another one you know what guys all that flex and you can't really get another tire on it okay there you are as you guys can see all that effort to make your vehicle perform so badly just to get one extra tire it definitely does for some amazing photos guys but yeah I, I don't see the point you guys can see the back wheels are now pushing into there because of the flex as well so that's another problem you've created we created by putting the flex blades on guys so yes you've got insane amounts of flex don't take me wrong and it looks sick as hell but nah that's just not my cup of tea so that's it that's your maximum flex guys it does look awesome you could probably get a bit more if you had to try and cut things and move things out of the way but yeah, that is your maximum flex. It is insanely flexy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys like flex, definitely it's not a bad way to go, guys. But there's too many downfalls from the angles on the drive lines, the servo catching on the chassis, the tires now rubbing. If you pay attention, look how much it squeezes up the tire. So yeah, and I'm already only running 56 mils on this Jeep, guys. So my overall opinion about the flex blades from Endura, it's not worth it. Rather invest your money into the new Shox 59 millimeters. You'll get those four tires, I'm pretty sure, in flex and you won't be causing so much trouble overall around the vehicle, okay guys? Because even though this is on the original chassis and that's what it was designed for, it's not much better than on the LCG chassis, okay guys? So that's my opinion about the flex blades. I'm probably gonna remove the upper ones. So let's just show you guys, I'll tell you guys what I'm gonna end up doing. Okay, I just want you guys to see how bad that really is. It's catching really severely. There's no way you'll miss that chassis. So to me, the flex blades on the front for multiple reasons is not worth running. From the angle on the drive line, which is so severe that you could actually snap something. The servo that actually catches on the chassis, that's another problem. And just in general, it's made it that you get too much coil in, so it actually rubs against the body now as well. So to me, not worth all the effort, okay guys? I'm gonna remove these on top here. We're gonna put the shock up straight, which I'm sure will already improve the amount it will go up, so it won't rub against the body again. And we are gonna completely get rid of the flex blades in the front. But I've shown you guys how to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, because it's not a hard thing to fit, guys. The only thing is I'm a bit let down, because why would they even bother producing things like this if it causes so much trouble to the vehicle? Okay, so my recommendations is buy the 53 or the 59 mil shocks from them. That's more than enough flex, guys, for what these vehicles need out there. Because the next thing that nobody shows you with the LCG chassis, you see, you don't have that problem with this one because the chassis is sitting straight. But the links squeeze against each other on the LCG chassis, guys. So that's another problem you get by running the flex blades on the LCG chassis, okay? And even without them, these links are not good on the LCG chassis, so I'm just letting you guys know that. Don't buy these if you're running the LCG chassis because the plastic um, uni joints at the end squeeze against each other, which actually don't allow the shocks to compress completely. Okay, guys? Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed another tutorial video here on how to fit the flex blades on the Traxxas TRX 4M. But I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna go and get some cool photos of it, and I'll leave you guys with that. And thank you guys so much for joining me again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my small channel out, guys.
Okay guys, as you can see, as soon as we come to anything steep that we've got to climb, there's just no way. It just wants to lift all the suspension out. I've already mentioned this in the previous video with the flex blaze on the Bronco. And this is a very easy, easy obstacle. It used to climb this, no problem guys. And now there's no chance. I have to try and find the smoothest line and even so, no way. It just throwing all the weight to the back, leaning over one way, nah, that's it. So as you guys can see, when it comes to climbing over obstacles like this, it's not worth it. But you guys saw how good it did in the riverbed. Because of the flex, it was amazing. But when it comes to obstacles like this, guys, it really, really hits the performance, okay? And who doesn't go up something? So to me, the flex blades is not the way to go, guys. They're awesome, but they're not the way to go. Okay, as you guys can see, it's got insane amounts of flex, guys. Check that out, man. I've got to say, it is amazing. If you like flex, guys, definitely think about getting this, guys. It is amazing. As you guys can tell, it's getting a bit dark outside now, so I'm struggling for light. But guys, thanks for joining me on another video. I hope you guys understand the point. I'm not hitting the flex blades. I'm just trying to say that to me, they do hit the overall performance of the vehicle, guys. Besides that, they are a hell of a cool fun factor. So guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you all on the next one guys.